Well, hello and welcome back to a journey through the book of Leviticus. Today is chapter 16. Today's a very special chapter because we're going to get to see a really cool parallel between something you may not have ever noticed, but it's very, very important when it comes to Jesus getting ready to die for the sins of the world in the Gospels. There is a moment when Jesus is standing before the nation and he's got Pilate really asking them, do you want Jesus to be released to you or do you want Barabbas? And we sometimes look at that and just go, okay, this is a, you know, the, the Bible said that it was a time when Pilate would annually let one prisoner just go as a gift to the people. And he was trying to give that as an opportunity for Jesus to be let go. But what he didn't realize, because Pilate probably never read the Old Testament, is he was actually fulfilling what was happening first set up in this particular chapter. And it's really powerful if you think about it. And so we're going to read chapter 16. We're going to get about halfway through it. And then we're going to stop and kind of share with you the parallel. This is going to be about one of the biggest days on the Jewish calendar for those who still celebrate Judaism or uh, live out the Jewish faith. And it is the Day of Atonement, a day when the high priest would go in and he would offer sacrifices for forgiveness for his family, the priesthood, and then also for the whole nation. And so let's read this, and then we're going to look and see how this powerful parallel is what Jesus fulfilled for us so many years later. So chapter 16, verse 1 says this, The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons, who had died after they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire before him. The Lord said to Moses, Warn your brother Aaron not to enter the most holy place behind the inner curtain whenever he chooses. If he does, he will die. For the ark's cover, the place of atonement, is there. And I myself am present in the cloud above the atonement cover. Verse 3. Here's the part that's so cool. Then the Bible said, When Aaron enters the sanctuary area, he must follow these instructions fully. He must bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put the linen tunic and the linen undergarments worn next to his body. He must tie the linen sash around his waist and put on a linen turban on his head. These are sacred garments, so he must bathe himself in water before he puts them on. Aaron must take the, from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Now listen to what he does. Verse 6, Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. Then he must take two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat will be reserved as an offering to the Lord and which will carry the sins to, of the people to the wilderness of Azazel. Aaron will then present as a sin offering the goat chosen by lot for the Lord. The other goat, the scapegoat chosen by lot to be sent away, will be kept alive standing before the Lord. When it is sent away to Azazel in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right with the Lord. So what he just said he did is he would bring two goats to the entrance of the temple or the tabernacle. And then what he would do, he has these two sacrifices ready, and then he would cast lots. Whichever one it fell to, one of them would then be slaughtered in order to, sac to be a sacrifice for the sins of the people. And the other one would be symbolic of, of putting the sins of the people on that sacrifice. And it won't be killed, but it'll be led away into the elder wilderness called for Azazel. Azazel is another word for destruction, for death, for the devil, for all the bad things. And so you have this symbol of two sacrifices. One is slaughtered for the sins of the people, and one is sent away. You'll never see it again, and it is uh, a symbol of all the sins just being gone. Well, you have a parallel to this in the New Testament. The Bible said that Pilate stood Jesus and a man named Barabbas before the people and said, Choose, which one should I release to all of you? And they began to yell and to yell and to yell, release to us Barabbas, release to us Barabbas. What should I do with Jesus? We should crucify him. Isn't it amazing that you have on one side Jesus, the Son of God, the Word made flesh, the Son of God. And on the other side, you have a guy named Barabbas, whose name literally means Son of my Father. You have the Son of God and you have the Son of my Father. One is chosen to be sent to die for the sins of all the world, and one is chosen to be let loose, never to be seen from again. Now, I am absolutely certain that Pilate has likely never read the Old Testament. But without him realizing it, he is fulfilling what this right here said. Because Jesus was going to be the sacrifice for the sins of the world. And he is just fulfilling to the letter even what was laid out right here. So let us keep reading. Verse 11. 
Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. After he has slaughtered the bull as a sin offering, he will fill the incense burner with burning coals from the altar that stands before the Lord. Then he will take two handfuls of fragrant powdered incense, and he will carry the burner and the incense behind the inner curtain. There, there the Lord's presence, in the Lord's presence, he will put the incense on the burning coals so that a cloud of incense will rise over the ark's cover, the place of atonement that rests on the ark of the covenant. If he follows these instructions, he will not die. Then he must take some of the bull, blood from the bull, dip his finger in it, and sprinkle it on the east side of the atonement cover. He must sprinkle blood seven times with his finger in front of the atonement cover. Then Aaron must slaughter the first goat as a sin offering for the people and carry its blood behind the inner curtain. There he will sprinkle the ghost's blood over the atonement cover in front of it, as he did with the bull's blood. Through this process, he will purify the most holy place, and he will do the same for the entire tabernacle because of the defiling sin and rebellion of the Israelites. No one is allowed inside the tabernacle when Moses enters it, or excuse me, Aaron enters it for the purification ceremony in the most holy place. No one may enter it until he comes out again after purifying himself, his family, and all the congregation of Israel, making them right with the Lord. Then Aaron will come out to purify the altar that stands before the Lord. He will do this by taking some of the blood from the bull and the goat and putting it on each of the horns of the altar. Then he must sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times over the altar. In this way, he will cleanse it from Israel's defilement and make it holy. Can you imagine? The Bible says that being the Ark of the Covenant, being close to it in the tabernacle, was the literal presence of God. And he would have to go in there twice in order to offer sacrifices for the whole community. So it must have been an awesome and, to be honest, quite terrifying experience. All right, verse 20. When Aaron has finished purifying the most holy place and the tabernacle and the altar, he must present a live goat. And he will lay both his hands on the goat's head and confess over it all the wickedness, rebellion, and sins of the people of Israel. In this way, he will transfer the people's sins to the head of the goat. Then the man, specially chosen for the task, will drive the goat into the wilderness. And the goat goes into the wilderness, and it will carry the people's sins upon it, upon itself, into a desolate land. That's the goat for Azazel, or in the New Testament, Barabbas. Verse 23. When Aaron goes back into the tabernacle, he must take off the linen garments he has been wearing when he entered the most holy place, and he must leave the garments there. Then he must bathe himself with water in a sacred place, put on his regular garments, and go out to sacrifice a burnt offering for himself and a burnt offering for the people. Through this process, he will purify himself and the people, making them right with the Lord. He must then burn all of the fat of the sin offering on the altar. The man chosen to drive the scapegoat to the wilderness of Azazel must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Then he may return to the camp. The bull and the goat presented as a sin offering, whose blood Aaron takes into the most holy place for purif the purification ceremony, will be carried outside the camp. The animal's hides, internal organs, and dung are all to be burned. The man who burns them must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water before returning to the camp. Verse 29. On the tenth day of the appointed month in early autumn, you must deny yourselves. Neither native-born Israelites nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. This is a permanent law for you. On that day, offerings of purification will be made for you, and you will be purified in the Lord's presence from all your sins. It will be a Sabbath day of complete rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. This is a permanent law for you. In future generations, the purification ceremony will be performed by the priest who has been anointed and ordained to serve as a high priest in place of his ancestor Aaron. He will put on the holy linen garments and purify the most holy place, the tabernacle, the altar, the priest, and the entire congregation. This is a permanent law for you to purify the people of Israel from their sins, making them right with the presence or with the Lord once a year. And Moses followed all these instructions exactly as the Lord had commanded. What an amazing thing to be able to be in the presence of God. And even then on the other side of it is God is saying, this is so holy, this is so important, that I want you just to rest in this. Rest in what's going on and rest in the promise that everything's going to be okay. Isn't that amazing? That God cares about all the things and 
This is just a a shadow of what was to come, that one day Jesus was going to be that goat for the Lord, that sacrifice for the Lord, and then wash away all of our sins for all of time. I want to know in the comments below, what did you get out of this? Did you know that that was the reason why, possibly, why uh, Pilate unknowingly had Jesus on one side and Barabbas on the other? Have you ever thought about that before? Have you ever thought about what it would be like for Aaron to walk into the very presence of the Lord? I want to know down in the comments below, and I will see you next time as we will talk about Leviticus chapter 17.